Okay, you know where we're at. We in the sauna, in the sweat box here, and I'm with uh, uh, a California boy, right? Oh yeah, Northern yeah. California. All right, Jeff Aldridge. Yeah, yeah. And Jeff's uh, one of the premium type players that comes here because this guy's already in a good, decent shape. So a lot of the different protocols that he's been doing really will massively change him and ways that sometimes people that are just starting won't get this this you know advantage because he's done a lot of homework already just to be able to really get to the level you're at and mm -hmm. and you're real physical so you know uh, were you always physical oh uh, yeah I grew up an athlete okay I've kind of forgot in college that I was an athlete you know got into you know my my schooling and then reawoke about my senior year and remembered that I just love to be physical, love to have optimum diet, you know, the, the evolution and progression. I've been playing football catch, badminton, you know, this guy's a real good athlete and, and him and I playing together, we're actually two good athletes and we get everybody else around us that's playing to become better athletes because our energy, because we know we can do it and we have fun doing it. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. It's a party. And everybody else, remember, really felt insecure because they think they got to compete with us. And they're not. Guys, you're just here to go ahead and learn some of the different play toys and tools that everybody else really, you know, when you grow up, you learn. You learn to play all these things. And if you didn't, it doesn't matter. No one's judging you. It's the best part about being an adult. So we played for like on your 13th day of water fasting. And we'll go through what he's done here. But he did on on his 13th day, and I said, hey, let's go play some catch. We're out there. And he was like at full gas throttle, sprinting as fast as you could. And we played for about a good hour. And, you know, so if you think you need food, well, you do. But a lot of people, when they're fasting, so like I said, he's advanced. I like to get people, if they're healthy, if they're going to fast, is to start to exercise. Because what this does is really pull this idea of ketogenics, okay? It's just like us right now. Before I came in here, I had to really go to the bathroom pretty good because I just drank a lot of water. And I know, just like we're doing right now, we've only been in here like five minutes. And both of us, because his pores are open like mine, okay? We're, we're urinating through our skin right now. Check it out. We're urinating through our skin. So we're not really sweating, and you'll know if you come in here, just like I always tell people, like, go in here and act like, you've, you know, like you really have to go to the bathroom, because you do. And then you'll notice in about 30 minutes, you just pee through your skin. <laughs> so this is this reverse, really smart uh, uh, physiology effect that the sauna does. It reverses you, but you gotta, you gotta work out a little bit. And so today with, with uh, Jeff, what we're going to do is, he's already been doing gua sha for a while. You can see his legs right here. It's from the bruises on those things. Beautiful. Nice work, huh? All right, because we were doing a, a little video the other day on on uh, acid reduction massage, and I was <clears throat> stepping on his legs there. And and anytime you get a bruise, you got to look at it. You can call it unhealthy tissue, but I call it sick or diseased tissue. And when you get the blood that actually runs back in there it bruises is because it didn't have the, that much blood before so <clears throat> you know bruising will happen to you consistently when you actually start to really clean your body up and and if you don't that means that you're not actually getting deep enough into the tissue okay because everybody everybody has this 
this uh, clogging of the of the pores and the energy field. So most people, okay, we've only been here like nine, seven minutes just to get a couple points across here. We're sweating up a storm. Most people that I put in coming here, okay, they don't even start to sweat for 20 minutes. And I'm already sweating in three minutes. And I, and I tell them, I, I feel like, look at you right now, see? Look, he's got a river going down him right now, okay? <laughs> yeah, a yeah. river, it's not just sweating. It's got a river, look at it going down. <laughs> okay, <laughs> same with mine. I got a river, I can feel it just running down my body. Okay, and, and this is when you know that the protocols that you're doing are very effective, very effective. So, um, just to let you in on this part here too, because I'm going to clean myself too. I already did this morning though, but you can see this is my alcohol rag that I used to really scrub. And it looks like I rolled in the mud or something, but I didn't. Okay, this is my weekly scrub, and you can see, look at all the garbage that came off of that. And that's on both sides. And you can see where my fingers were on these spots right here, where they're really dark on the spots, because I had my fingers and using my, my fingertips digging in the pores. And you're going to see more stuff come out because people say, oh, that's just on your skin. I just cleaned it. Okay? So once your pores are open, this is your savior to keep yourself clean. Your body's just a big filter, and the biggest filter you own is your skin. So <clears throat> uh, you've been doing... Uh, how long have you been actually doing any of this terrain modification, these ideas at all? I mean, when did you start? Uh, probably like uh, on my own about six years ago. And then I started following you three, three years ago when okay. you had the parrot on your shoulder and the long hair. <laughs> yeah, the hippie hair, yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Who's this guy? That's what everybody says. Who's that, Tarzan? <laughs> yeah, he's got one of his animals. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what, what happened back then? I mean, why, why did you even want to switch up? Just because maybe you thought it was healthier, or were you sick to some degree, or did you have, what, what made you sort of want to step up or change your, your lifestyle? Because that's what it is, not just yeah, eating different foods, sure. it's changing your lifestyle. I mean, I've always had like uh, these digestive issues that mm -hmm. I thought were just like a part of me, like growing up like in high school and then early years of college, like, uh, you know, like dairy allergies and mm -hmm. wheat allergies and just like always like bloated, bloated and gassy. gas and diarrhea or constipation I and had all the same things realistically yeah. i got a new girlfriend like my uh, senior year of college and i really didn't want to be mm -hmm. bloated and gassy you know exactly. so like well i was like what is this and uh i got a book it was just my first health book it was called fit for life and it was about food combining and i never even considered the concept of like not drinking milk like it wasn't in, even in my like peripheral consciousness. What was the guy's name on that book? Because I remember that was he was like one of the first ones to put uh, these books out. Like a yeah, yeah. I, for, I, I forget. I feel like his name is Mark, but uh, yeah. Could oh, that was that, that's a that was a big book. So so fitness for life. Yeah, and then uh, some. I I met a girl in a bookstore, and she handed me this book called uh, uh, Way of the Peaceful Warrior. Okay. And like I. I didn't really look that cool of a book, but uh, I wanted to, you know, exchange notes with her. Sure, sure. And so I started reading it, and it was my first book about, like, living in the present and eating maybe a more raw food, vegetable diet. And that had never even crossed my mind before. So, so the book was like a metaphysical type book. Yeah. So I had a, I had a health book and a metaphysical type book, and I took my first yoga class. Yeah, and then it was like a snowball. And then ever since then, it's been... So he's saying what he's, you know, pretty much, that's sort of like my past been too, okay? Um, we all sometimes upgrade ourselves because of just whatever circumstances and dynamics. Uh, sometimes we downgrade ourselves, but, you know, when I did my first yoga class too, let me tell you, I only did it because it was like a big mistake. My girlfriend at that time wanted to go. And I said, nah, I'm gonna go work out. And they closed the gym, the one part, so I couldn't work out. And I said, okay, I wanna go to the yoga class. And from then on, I was hooked. I was hooked. And I always thought going to yoga was like for girls or for, 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 for old people. And this was one of the most beneficial things with also changing my fuel and, and learning detoxification uh, protocols from clean, skin cleaning to mm -hmm. cleansing, fasting. So. Tell us about your, your, your journey here. You've been here now how many days? I've uh, been here 27 days. Mm, nice. Yeah, it's been... How do you like it? Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> total rejuvenate, rejuvenation, refreshing, revitalizing. Like, I feel focused. I feel like uh, I'm, on, I'm back on my path. Yeah. And I'm optimized and I'm light. I'm strong. 
And uh, it's been a hell of a journey. I mean, uh, I did a 14-day water fast. That's what I wanted to hear. And uh, Tell us about that. Yeah, it was crazy. It was, um, what kind of water did you drink? Distilled. That's it. Okay, we make it here. Yeah, yeah. F- fresh distilled. Mm-hmm. Um, I got here and I was I was ready to go. So I was... I was did, in- you, did you fast at all or did you clean up yourself before you got, got here? Yeah, I was, uh, I was light and I did, I was, you know, doing a lot of fruit when I came mm-hmm. in just to have a light diet and I was in, new in Hawaii, so. Yeah, more liquid fruit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it made, it made sense at the time. When's, when's the last time as far as, you know, you know, to just drop this part in it, do you still eat meat or did you before? When was the last time you had it? Uh, probably two weeks before I got here. Okay, and what kind of meat were you eating? I had a burger. Okay. So but it was, it was a grass-fed, you know. I was going to say, what kind of meat was it, though? So it, was it... Grass-fed burger, um, you know, it's not... So a lot of times what I'm saying is a lot of people that actually, you know, go through fasting sometimes go through a lot of turbulences because they're not feeding whatever's living inside them uh, anymore. Did you go any go through any turbulence for, let's say, the first week? Because you went 14 days. Mm-hmm. You know, most people just say, I'm going to go a week and see what I can do. Is that what your mind was, or...? Um, I was, uh, once, once I got here and I saw what everyone was doing, people yeah. were going the distance. I was like, they're going to do it. I'm, I'm in. Colleen, 31 days. Yeah, exactly. She's like a Champion. superhero. Champion. Yeah. And uh, Mike did 14 days and he, you know, he kind of challenged me the first day I was here. He said, beat that. Nice. And I didn't want to make it a competition, but it was, <laughs> it was a little motivating. No, no, nice. And then you're, you're not, me personally, I got to like day 10. And it was like, why would I stop now? Like, easy. how often do you get to day ten of a water fast? Mm-hmm. So was it was it easy after a certain amount of days though? Um, what was your most turbulent? Day four was super turbulent. And which way? Um, I just had like zero energy and like motivation was down. I started like having depression like, a little bit. Depression. I was in bed a lot and like I was yeah. I saw you disappeared there for a few days. Yeah, yeah, totally <laughs> and completely. Yeah, you disappeared. A lot of people do that. They disappear. You take naps. You're just just on this this sort of withdrawal. Is yeah, what it is. It's like coming off of uh, heroin, sugar, meat, all these things here. After sugar, th- meat, caffeine, uh, booze, alcohol, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, after three days. <laughs> That's when your body has nothing in it, and it goes to this switch. That's when everybody, he said the fourth day, that's right around ketosis, when we got to get energy from somewhere else, and wow, is that a lot of weird feelings in your system. Yeah, even the thoughts about, like, you know, at night, you know, just be like, why don't you just go up to the refrigerator, you know, mm-hmm. like, just like the... Yeah, because there's food all over, you got a thousand fruit trees on the property here, yeah, and everything's exactly. going, hey, come and try me. And the people that are refeeding are just having the feast of their yeah, lifetime. Exactly. So, so you did... On their fourth day, and then after that, you know, you know, did you have sleeping problems? Did you notice a lot of nightmares? Did you have emotional, like, that kind of stuff? Um, my dreams got super vivid. Mm-hmm. Like, so I, I could remember them, like, play by play, which okay. hadn't really been uh, uh, a part of my life okay. for a long time. And now, to this day, I'm still remembering them. It's that mm-hmm. they're, they're pretty... Powerful. They're powerful. Yeah, they just didn't go through your head, and all of a sudden you go, what did I just have a dream about? Yeah, they, they stick in they the stick morning. with you. Um, it started getting turbulent a little bit again around day 11. I felt, I felt like a weakness mm-hmm. come over me. I like, I felt like I like, aged like 30 years. Yeah. Like I needed a walker or something like <laughs> that. You, yeah. Um, but then like we played, we played football on day 13, 13. and I sw- it was like my blood thinned out or like uh, I had thick blood almost mm-hmm. and working up to that day playing football and after that it just felt like I was juiced <laughs> Good. and the circulation was going yeah so you know he he can't I say this to a lot of people you know a lot of people are used to looking if we didn't have mirrors here or anything else and you couldn't see yourself from day one until like, maybe day 21 and you and you didn't look at yourself you would see what a lot of times I see I see sometimes changes two three four days and then I have a good memory. I remember from the beginning, a lot of times people, they came in puffy-faced, just their energy's lazy, uh, just just skin's yellow, just really, you know, not vital. And then after a certain amount of days, I tell everybody, you know, when, when it happens, when I see it, I said, man, look at you. I call him Mr. GQ now. <laughs> okay? He looks looks like a like an underwear model type guy, okay? And, and he's doing 
one of the things that a lot of people just don't do is because their body's not that physical to start with, but exercise is one of the most important things that you can do once you dry out your body. You have to re regrow your ner neuro nets, as I call them, or what you can just call them is your, your nerve path like highways. And the only way you can is uh, through deep massage, okay, deep massage, and through reprogramming, and that's through mm -hmm. exercising. We were we were just doing some chia chia. I was showing him some different things like that, and you know he's at an advanced stage where I can't even show anybody these types of things. Is because you have to have a certain layer of physicality. Then once you do, these are like beautiful tools, just like a carpenter starting and he gets his first you know from from hand saw. Now he's got an electric saw, so he's learning tools now that wouldn't merely make sense to a lot of people, only because they haven't done a, not the homework so much, but the practice. So you've been doing this for six years, okay? You what? Did you cut out any meat, or what, a certain type of meat, or did you have anything? What, how how did that work with the meat? meat? With the I I basically just got super clean. Like uh, back at home, I was doing more like of a of a paleo kind of thing, and okay. you know farmers market meat. Know my farmer. Know where my eggs are coming from. So you eating pork though? No. Okay. So you eating beef, chicken, beef, buffalo maybe. Beef, buffalo, and eggs. Okay. And the fish, my my body just hasn't been calling for for the mm -hmm. last like, for probably about two years now. Okay. So I haven't really done much of that. Yeah, and I used to eat two pounds of meat a day, and 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 why? Because it made me made me strong. It did the meat, and I sort of figured out that you know once you really detox yourself and you get a lot of these different creatures out of you, eating meat now is sort of weird. It's because because it looks different now. I go into the store now, and it's not the meat department; it's the morgue. And it's sort of weird. I look at the the flesh now. It looks like carcass now, all wrapped up really nice, and and then you know, it it's like a change of of the way I see uh, food. And it's really important for people to really see if you're gonna have any meat, you gotta have grass fed. You're gonna have chickens. You wanna get if you can farmers fresh chickens. Okay, uh, eggs. Uh, if you're gonna have any, you know any any animal prog, even if it's ghee butter, make sure where you're getting it from is not, not, you know, in a negative state. So, you know, there are lots of good things that, you know, you can put into yourself. Like I said, it's not that meat's so bad for you. Once you get to a certain level of, of, of morals and consciousness, there's no reason for me to kill anything anymore to stay alive. It's not that the meat's not good for you. In fact, I know a lot of people that actually are, are exercising and eating good meat, and they're very, very healthy and or healthier than most vegetarians and vegans that I meet all the time. So, you know, it, it's basically a lot of it is exercise and reprogramming and detoxifying your system. But then again, putting in the things that meat's missing. I like to add creatine to my to my uh, diet because meat's loaded full of creatine. And creatine is what makes my, my muscles feel like they want to do another repetition. Yeah, that brings that ATP. Yeah, we did 20 push-ups outside. I did 10 fast ones real quick. And the old days, you know, 10 push-ups is, you know, getting getting to my, not limit, but basically where all of a sudden I'm pooping out. And now I can do 20 or 30. And it's because of certain things that I've put back into my diet that I took out of my diet before where I really, you know, sort of got weak. And I didn't want to exercise. Because part of you exercising is either disciplining yourself to do it and after a couple months, you'll like doing it, or that your system uh, is already a semi-gazelle, and it loves to exercise, and that's where you're at. Yeah, but like just to speak to, at right after fasting, mm -hmm. it was like my body just wanted to stay like fasting and like no, low want, vibe. Did, didn't didn't want the food. No, it didn't want to. It didn't want to move. Mm -hmm. Like, I still wanted to take naps, even though, like... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. <clears throat> well, remember, your whole system, once you clean it out, your body needs to be now rebuilt, and it needs conductive minerals. He was on distilled water, which has nothing in it. And so the only food he was getting, any food, was from himself. Unless he cheated, which some people do here. They have a, you know, little chocolate bar or something on the side. They have a few things they bring in their bag just in case. It's sort of like a parachute. <laughs> Did you bring anything just in case? <laughs> no. You gave me a you gave me a cacao bar that I just looked at for two okay. weeks. But and, I, I and didn't if, break it. And if you it. had to have a cacao bar, basically that's not sugar. Okay? And if you wanted to, you know, really be smart, remember about refeeding, trying to 
always stay away from sugar as much as you can. And trying to really use sugar now instead of actually putting it in your body, you're using it to make more powerful microbes. Okay, and that's sort of the best thing that I've ever done. Number one is put probiotics back into my system consistently. I don't just take pills at all. I don't take any pills. I grow them. I take the live ones. And then having my own live garden. Garden, okay, is life force. Okay, even buying stuff from the farmer's market is way better than buying it from the store. But there's nothing better than growing your own, whatever you're growing. There's yours. That's a clean one. Uh, uh, whatever you're growing and what I do is I go out 30 minutes before I'm going to eat and I pull off my different leaves that I don't take the whole plant the leaf just keeps on growing I just take off some leaves the lower leaves and just work its way up instead of me eating the broccoli tell you the truth I eat the broccoli leaves the cabbage leaves okay they've got way more power than you think those are the solar panels and so this is really helpful in regeneration is to try to get back to live food and drinking now instead of just distilled water because that doesn't have any minerals is putting back in some minerals in your system and charging yourself with exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you get the charge though, then it's like then you want to, and that's like that that feels good that lifestyle where you want to go out exactly. You know, and um, it's not exercise; it's like just going out and playing. It's playing. Yeah, no, that's the big thing. So, <clears throat> tell us now. You went ahead and did fourteen days water. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you started to refeed, and mm -hmm. then tell them your story on that area. You were, I started, you were tired in the first couple of days, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was just gonna pop back and just be like, you know. Yeah. You would if you would have ate a bunch of sugar. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't. I haven't eaten pretty much any sugar. I had one experience with a uh, a jackfruit, mm -hmm. where because I've never tried a jackfruit before, so I was curious. Yeah, what it is. And I tried it, and it was like. Uh, it was it's delicious in a in a way bubblegum yeah but it's it was actually like repulsive to my system it was so sweet and i didn't it like naturally did not want to have anything to do with it and uh that's big for me cuz i was i was coming off like you know six pieces of fruit a day and it was probably jacking my uh blood sweet, sugar and sweet man sweet guy i like to put a, a peppermint put that in your mouth yeah i like to put peppermint uh, on my body while i'm in here too just because it it sort of like wakes me up because otherwise we're at 145 degrees. We've been in here now for uh, 27 minutes, okay? Uh, and and we probably sweat about three pounds. Oh, that peppermint smells so good. It wakes me up. Yeah, that's cool. So his whole movement now that he's going to sort of share with you here is the refeeding part. And he didn't have that much sugar. Okay, and that's hard for most people because remember their yeast mold fungus and candida have been starved and once they see it on a plate you'll know who's in control a little bit because that's all you'll want to have mm -hmm. and once you eat it you'll want more and you'll swallow it so fast because for some reason you've denied your body these these sugars and then and then an hour later two hours later you'll feed <clears> again <throat> and an hour or two later you'll feed again yeah and this is a bad process yeah. so insatiable insatiable so I, I look at fruit now as, you know, it's not that you can't get healthy with eating it. You've got to eat the right types and live and everything. But it's easier for people. It's very simple for people to dry themselves out. Because remember, you have 100 million diabetics and 100 million obese people. Why? Sugar and toxicity. So he's refeeding. And what were you refeeding with now? Uh, now we're refeeding high fat. So like uh, doing, mm -hmm. you know, avocados and coconut meat and a lot of live food a lot of sauerkrauts a lot of kombucha nice. mm -hmm. uh, we even made like we made a fruit uh, probiotic where we fermented the fruit so they're pretty much uh, mm -hmm. low sugar exactly but it really it gets the system moving um, but it was was it did, it did it feel like you were like having cessation did you feel like you you know remember you haven't eaten anything for 14 days so did you feel fulfilled just having with those little things you know because you get humble after a 14 day water yeah. fast <laughs> yeah. half avocado and you're full yeah um you know the the coolest thing is like i feel cessation and i i feel like a streamline base energy where mm -hmm. it's not like i have to go feed before i go work out and then feed again after i work out it's like yep. streamline throughout the whole day um, into the night without like the na nap dips, nappy feeling, yeah. nappy feeling that is just a killer when you're trying to be productive. Yeah, and then uh, yeah, multiple times a day of just going outside and and playing. So that's what he's saying right now is the way my energy field is. It's baseline, and I have my breakfast tea here. It is here. I'm still working on it. It's about twelve o'clock right now, 
and you can see it's got it's got some golden berries. I don't have any sugar in there at all. Golden berries are very low in sugar. Yerba mate. Uh, I've got bamboo tea in here. Minerals, nutmeg, cinnamon. Sometimes I'll put in different types of, of spices uh, like cardamom or, or uh, just anything that makes it, you know, change it up a little bit. Uh, this is my breakfast and my lunch right here. I drank the tea this morning. It was all liquid. And at the bottom here, this is loaded full of chia seeds. So the chia seeds, you remember, do have protein in them. They do have oils in them. But there's really hardly any sugars in this at all. And this really keeps my baseline. If I have sugars in the morning or have myself a, a meal that's got some density to it, then a lot of times that my creativity and my feeling of wanting to do things has sort of been cut down like 30, 40 percent. Mm -hmm. And when I don't have food, you'd think that you'd have less energy, but I have more. Mm -hmm. But I did have the tea. The tea is fun, too. Like, mm -hmm. you, you look forward to it in the morning, oh, and yeah. you know it's going to get you going, and it's going to satiate you. So, it's like, it's not, I don't look forward to that cup of coffee to get me jacked anymore. Yeah. I look forward to that to, like, bring me up, get me going, and then set me. Yeah, set the coffee. I, I have a cup of coffee every week. I get some organic coffee, and what it does is I, I like to go and experiment with it. Um, and... Uh, it makes me, the energy that it gives me, because it has caffeine in it, it's a nervous type of energy versus the yerba mate, uh, is more of an active energy that doesn't make me feel all nervous and, and, and sort of stressy. So that's the difference between a lot of people, you know, having yerba mate at, versus uh, uh, regular coffee. But if you're still drinking regular coffee, one of the ways you can cut down some of the acid, because it's the acid that makes you feel weird. And it takes about 32 glasses of alkaline water just to process, uh, you know, a cola drink or a cup of tea or, or coffee if, if it's high, highly acidic. 32 glasses of water just to neutralize that. So what we do is we start out, if you have an alkaline water machine, you start out with a pH of 10. And you use that as your base to go ahead and take cheap coffee, okay, because cheap coffee is bitter coffee is what it is. That's why, you know, it's one of the reasons why expensive coffee doesn't have a, a, an aftertaste of bitterness. And also tea, you'll notice, is very acid if you get your pH meter. But once you use a pH of 10, it changes the tea from 4.5 or the coffee 3.5 uh, to 6.5. Close, not alkaline, but really close. So my body doesn't have to, to process all that. My one cup of coffee that I have on Saturday, I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel it moving around because it's irritating it. And so I've learned myself now. I have some alkaline drops, and I bring myself uh, their... Basically, I put about four or five drops in the espresso sometimes that I'll get, organic and, and all that. But it's it's just using whatever water they're using. So what I do is I take off the, the acidity to it. And then, and then it doesn't bother me one bit because a lot of people have stomach problems. And it's because of a few simple things that can, that can switch over. But everybody drinks tea or coffee. Now, what about, um, like, have you tried the, the cold brew coffee, which they say is little lower acid it is because it doesn't boil everything out so the best thing to do is use still pH of 10 it'll leach it really super good but it'll neutralize the acidity you want the caffeine and there's lots of good stuff not only in coffee uh, besides the caffeine okay there's a lot of good nutrients if you look up what coffees you know coffees it's not so bad for you. it's the chemicals it's all the the pesticides insecticides all the stuff fungicides that they put on the coffee and uh, you're not really having coffee, just like sometimes when you're smoking cigarettes. You're not smoking tobacco. You're smoking chemicals and pesticides. So you've got to really, you know, sort of negotiate and step up to whatever layer you can. And then in time, you'll find out. Try Uber Mate. Not for a couple of days. Do it for like a month. The coffee sort of stuffs you up a little bit. It makes people go to the bathroom, but it's a nervous to go into the bathroom. And when you do the yerba mate, this is like a wash. This is the, they call it an intestinal cleanser. And mm -hmm. it does. That's squeezing the... The towel, pretty okay, much. Okay, so you did fermented stuff, and then how long did you do that that type of uh, idea? And you started exercising, of course. Yeah, I'm still on, I'm still pretty heavy on the ferments, just as like, I, I, I feel more energy when I eat a live food, mm -hmm. and it's just like uh, even even eating the vegetables. Like I know they're they're not necessarily alive anymore, but partially alive. Partially alive. I can go from. E just pigging out on a huge salad directly to the field mm -hmm. and go 100% without any digestive problems. Right? Problems, and yeah. that's that's pretty crazy for like, you know, going 100% and eating five minutes before. Oh no, I used to be able to eat a big, you know, whatever you're going to eat, and then I, I not only wouldn't exercise for about a half an hour to 45 minutes, and that's if I if I felt like it. Yeah. Now I'm tired. Now you got to take a nap. <laughs> exactly. 
So then you uh, are right, uh, let's see, how long do you stay for? Um, I think I leave on Wednesday. Okay, and you'll, what's like a month's day? Hmm? Yes, yeah, I ended up staying 30 days. All right. And, you know, as far as anybody else doing this, you know, give them a little inspiration on, on making a jump of taking, not only just, you know, doing something like this. Okay, you did also, he did IV therapies, right? Mm -hmm. okay. mm hmm These are advanced ways to get out toxicity out of your system once you dry yourself out. You did colon hydrotherapy. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did, see, times. did you see anything come out at all? Um, these, uh, these nodules come out that... Little balls? Yeah. Like that, eggs? Like before. eggs. Those came out. I had, I think I had one little, like, one little critter come out. Mm-hmm. Which uh, was interesting to see. Yeah, the eggs, when you really study the rope parasite, the rope parasite comes in many different stages, and a, a lot of people don't have the adult uh, stage yet uh, formed. And the beginning stage is like uh, sort of like mucus. The second stage is sort of looks like branched jellyfish, sort of orangey a little bit, or sometimes just clear, but it's branchy, and and more like like sort of spaghettiish, but but mucusy, N no real form to it, but just like mucus, but more thicker. And then the third stage, it starts turning into some weird creature. Hmm. And then in the fourth and fifth stage, it turns into sort of like a snake. And uh, they move by jet propulsion. And uh, this is a newly discovered parasite uh, that's pretty much probably in everybody. I know. I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I didn't even know what those things were that were coming out. And a lot of times, you know, when you start doing these fasts, getting the initial as much as you can get out is, is the best thing you can do. But then sometimes you have to take a little deeper drastic action as long as you feel that you can. Hmm. Because any of this technology that you're using, IV therapies and everything, they, it's not that they have side effects. They change your terrain. They change your energy field. And sometimes people just, you know, their parasites are very strong. And if they change your energy field, like we've had a couple people here, and they can't get out of bed. Oh, yeah. Okay. Remember, you you fared you you're you're pretty pretty easy here. Uh, as far as a lot of people that go through, they go through a lot of turbulence. Mm. So now, as far as uh, what do you think people? Do you think this would be good for people to do something like this? Oh yeah, I think it's mandatory. Is what it is. I mean, it really just steps up. Your, it's a whole new echelon. It's like a whole new life. Mm -hmm. I feel brand new. You've been born again, <laughs> as I say. You didn't even go to church. Exactly. You, did. you went to your own church. I went cleaned to my up, own temple. You cleaned up your church. Yeah, and I, you know, like like we talked about, it was pretty healthy coming, at least I thought. And what I've experienced here is just like this incredible lightness. Mm -hmm. uh, like the my my skin is cleared up. I've had swollen ankles for the last like five years. Um, I feel like scar tissue is is loosening up, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, just. It's oh, and you're running around. He's got stomach muscles all over him. I was showing him this morning, you know, the, the veins. You want to be able to see this vein that comes all the way down here. It's like Highway 5, I call it. And you can see it on him. When he came, I didn't see the full vein. Now I can see valves on top of his veins. That means you're getting thinner, more transparent, and that means you're losing a lot of toxicity. Because if you can't see through your skin, it only means that you've got some cement in there. And that's what we're going to do on part two here. Because I wanted to soften him up first. We've been in here now uh, about 35 minutes or so. Okay, so now we're going to do two things. One, he's got these little tiny fine lines on his face. Okay, I haven't done mine in a long time either. And this wipes everything down that's, that's starting to build up from us touching our hands all the time with our face. From just whatever that that goes into our pores, sometimes goes into the skin, and it makes the skin go ahead and have uh, age to it. Okay, so uh, very important to learn some of these techniques. I call it a it's a non-surgical facelift. So let's go ahead and uh, number two. What we're going to do to him is we're going to do a a what I call a primal scraping. And primal scraping is is exactly what it is. It's a little, little uh, it's, a, it's a little primal. It's a little, a little rough. Okay, but he's already been doing this for a while, and you're going to see stuff come out of his skin. Okay, why is because he can now. And I've done this to a lot of people. And if unless your pores pretty much sweat in ten minutes when you come in here, that means for me when I work on you, most likely you haven't opened your pores up enough, and I'm not going to get too much out. And if you don't sweat until you hit the twenty minute mark, and you got like two drops. It means nothing's coming out of your skin. Your, your, your plug's solid. So, like I said, I know 
like Mike that did the 14 days mm -hmm. of this year. Okay. He was like my, I call him my best, best student. You can call it my best brother. He is, his stuff came out of him so dark and so black. It was oh ridiculous. New York living right there. Huh? It's all ridiculous. Like black soot that was coming out of him. Not a little. I mean, it ruined my towels. I had to bleach it. <laughs> I should have sent it back to him just to go ahead and show him. So we're going to use a variety of different tools and a, and a technique uh, with some different solvents. One of the solvents we're going to use is some magnesium. And part of what he's going to do on his face, because remember, he's a young and just got some fine lines here and a little, little uh, couple fine lines on his forehead. And, and his are, of course, nothing. You wish you could have the skin like his guy as it is. But I see that he can go ahead and clean a few more things up because he's already at this level. And normally, I would not do this to anybody until they clean themselves up as much as they can. You know, people that have a lot of big jowls and big wrinkles, there's a lot of stuff you can work on yourself to, to you know, to really, you know, just uh, clean yourself up as much as you can before you think that the washing like I'm going to show you here is going to help you because most likely it's just going to tear your skin or you're going to bruise yourself up and you're just going to hurt yourself. So he's ready. And you'll notice when I do him, he won't get a bruise on him. Okay, he's going to get a few bruises, maybe in a couple of the spots that the blood flows not too well. But when I do his face, he won't even have any at all. And you're going to see the stuff that comes off him. And this is a 2.2 pH fulvic acid. We have this specially made for us. Uh, it's loaded full of boron and boron is special for its regeneration pro uh, properties in the human body. You can see it's purple. You can see it. It's got a purple tinge to it. And that's the boron. See the purple in there? What? So it's purple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we'll show you the technique, but for right now, wipe your face and wipe off all the water because we want to put this on at full strength. And I'll show you the technique on, on opening this up in a sec. The fulvic member is 2.2 pH. I don't want to dissolve it with him, with water. So he's wiping off all of his water on your neck too and in your ears. There you go. Okay, so what he's going to do, and then wipe your hands off really good because we want as dry as you can. And then I'm going to put a squirt of this, and he's just going to let this sit on there and brew. The magic is not just putting this on your face. It's how to go ahead and actually soften and, and really, you know, it's like being a clay sculpturist, taking off hardened, dead skin and toxicity that lives right underneath the skin, which we call wrinkles. And also certain types of critters that live in our pores that we call hair mites. So what this does, this pretty much wipes a lot of guys out. Okay, and I'm going to put a whole dropper full in his hands. See, it's a little purple in there. And then yeah. rub, your, rub your hands together. There you go. And you want to really put this on your face. Just rub, rub it on the face. Yeah, rub it really good. Just don't get it in your eyes. And if you do, it'll, you know, just wipe it up. And if you get a little in your hair, it won't bother you at all. And in fact, if you're losing your hair, this is really good to go. Let's soak into your scalp or put this into the alcohol solution, which we show you how to make. So he's going to let that sit on. <clears throat> For a few minutes because this stuff works quick and it's going to start eating a lot of uh, the the tissue that's that's not him and we're going to scrape that off in a sec okay let's rewind this this uh, television show here all right here we go one two whoo Important reminder, all information and ideas are for informational purposes only and are in no way intended as medical advice 
or as a substitute for medical counseling. Earthshift Products, Dr. Robert Kassar, all of their partners, affiliates, and subsidiaries will not be held accountable for the use or misuse of the information presented therein. This information is not intended as medical advice. The authors, publishers, and speakers of this work are not medical doctors and do not recommend the use of mineral deficient foods, drugs, or medicines to achieve beauty and to alleviate health challenges. Because there is always some risk involved, all persons involved with the development and distribution of this information are not responsible for any adverse effects or consequences of any kind resulting from the use or misuse of any suggestions or procedures described on our website or Earthshift Live radio talk show or therein.